subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lepakshi khurana here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Monday, the 18th of April. 23 arrested in Jahangirpuri violence case in Indian capital, security stepped up. Pakistan PM Shehbaz Sharif writes to India's PM Modi, bats for meaningful engagement. And Sri Lankan President expands Cabinet despite demands for resignation. And now for all the details. Police in Indian capital on Monday informed that at least 23 people had been arrested in connection with the violence during a religious procession in New Delhi's Jahangirpuri area, which injured eight police officers and a civilian. Heavy security was further beefed up on Monday in the violence-affected area. A total of 23 accused from both communities have been arrested in connection with the violence in Indian capital New Delhi's Jahangir Puri. Delhi Police Commissioner Rakesh Asthana said on Monday, two days after clashes broke out in the area during a religious procession, security was further beefed up in the violence-affected area on Monday while forensic experts assessed the spot and the CCTV footages. There were reports of another minor incident of throwing bricks at the police team when they went to arrest an accused in the area. However, the police said it was a minor one-off incident and one person had been detained. Police informed eight police personnel and a civilian were injured in the incident. We have arrested the offense register and arrested the 23 accused. In the 23, there are 8 accused who have been previous involvement. CCTV footage or dusa jo digital evidence available hai, uske analysis chal rahi hai, uske adhar pe abhi kuch aur logon ko identify kiya gaya hai. Similar clashes broke out in Hubli town in southern India, where an unidentified mob attacked a temple and vandalized residential areas with stones, bricks and swords during the weekend. Opposition politicians have accused ruling Bharatiya Janata Party of stoking tensions between majority Hindus and Muslims in states that it rules. And India's tally of daily COVID-19 cases nearly doubled on Monday from the previous day to more than 2,000 for the first time in a month, government data showed, and the southern state of Kerala reported a big jump in deaths. 2,183 new infections were reported on Monday, taking the running total to more than 43 million. Apart from Kerala, Delhi and the states of Maharashtra and Haryana reported triple-digit increases in infections in the past 24 hours. India was at the centre of the global COVID crisis this time last year, but the situation has improved since then and most precautions, including the wearing of masks, have recently been dropped. But cases have been creeping up in the country of 1.35 billion people in the past few days. Capital New Delhi last week tightened COVID precautions for schools in neighbouring Uttar Pradesh state, India's most populous state, again made masks compulsory in public places in some districts. The Delhi Disaster Management Authority will this week convene a meeting to discuss the pandemic situation in the national capital. And moving on, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif in a letter to his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi has sought meaningful engagement and the peaceful resolution of outstanding disputes, including the Kashmir issue. The letter came in response to a message from Modi congratulating him on his election as Pakistan's 23rd Prime Minister. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has sought meaningful engagement and the peaceful resolution of outstanding disputes, including the Kashmir issue, in a letter to his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi. Sharif's letter came in response to a missive from Modi congratulating him on his election as the Pakistani Prime Minister. Sharif said, We believe that peaceful and cooperative ties between Pakistan and India are imperative for the progress and socio-economic uplift of our people and for the region. Modi had earlier in a message to Shehbaz on Twitter said, 
India desires peace and stability in a region free of terror so that we can focus on our development challenges. India-Pakistan relations fell to a fresh low after the 2019 Pulwama terror attack by Pakistan-based Jaishe Mohammed and the scrapping of Jammu and Kashmir's special status by the Indian government in August the same year. India has maintained that the changes in Kashmir were an internal matter while linking any engagement with Pakistan to credible and sustained action against terror groups operating from Pakistani soil. Meanwhile, Pakistan on Sunday extended for two months the period for India to transport 50,000 metric tons of wheat and life-saving medicines as humanitarian assistance to war-torn Afghanistan via the atari Waga border crossing. And the Pakistanis have expressed they are not hopeful that the country's newly elected Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif will be able to control soaring inflation as the country grapples with a balance of payment crisis. Residents in financial capital Karachi said they are disappointed as the past record of PMLN-led government has been full of corruption. Residents across Pakistan have expressed they are not hopeful that the country's new Prime Minister, Shahbaz Sharif, will be able to control rising inflation amid an ongoing economic crisis. Sharif inherits crippling national debt, galloping inflation and a feeble rupee that has fallen to 190 to the US dollar, while growth rates have been stagnant. Locals in Karachi city said they are disappointed as the past record of PMLN-led government have been marred by corruption. ये अंगुलियां खाने के लिए सब मिल जाती हैं खाने के लिए लेकिन जब निवाला खत्म हो तो बिखर जाती हैं इसी तरह ये चोर लुटेरे खाने के लिए मिल बैठते हैं बाकी उसके बाद एक दूसरे को गालियां देते हैं उसको पता नहीं गरीब आदमी के घर में आटा क्या किलो आ रहा है चीनी क्या किलो है क्या इनकी हुकूमत आने के बाद चीनी पैंसठ रुपये किलो कर देंगे पेट्रोल पैंसठ रुपये किलो करेंगे हम हिमायत कल आज से उनकी हिमायत करते हैं लेकिन ये खुद चोर हैं चालीस साल से चोरी कर रहे हैं तो आज करेंगे क्या मुल्क का Meanwhile, reports suggest a high-powered Pakistan delegation is expected to meet the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank in the United States this week, amid a looming balance of payment crisis. In a populist move to avoid backlash, Shahbaz Sharif last Friday said he has decided not to roll back billions in fuel subsidies for the time being, despite the strain on public funds. The relief measure by ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan, estimated at 2.1 billion US dollars, has stretched government finances in a way that cannot be sustained. It has also endangered the ongoing IMF rescue program, Sharif said. And in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's President Gotabaya Rajpaksa expanded his cabinet with 17 new ministers on Monday, but they did not include members of his family who were dropped as protests erupted over the government's handling of a devastating economic crisis. The President's elder brother, Mahindra Rajpaksa, however, remains the Prime Minister. Sri Lanka President Gotabaya Rajapaksa on Monday appointed 17 cabinet ministers for the administration of the government amid ongoing protests over government's handling of a devastating economic crisis. Only five members of the previous cabinet were sworn in again, while most of the other portfolios were allocated to members of the ruling Sri Lanka, Podujana Perumona. A statement from President's office said the cabinet portfolios held by the President and Prime Minister have not changed. Besides Gotabaya's elder brother Mahinda Rajpaksa, no other member of the family is in new cabinet. Another two of the president's brothers, Basil and Chamal Rajpaksa, and the prime minister's son, Namal Rajpaksa, were part of the outgoing cabinet and were not reappointed. Thousands of Sri Lankans have been protesting outside the president's office in the commercial capital Colombo for over a week, asking for the Rajpaksas to quit government. The island nation of 22 million is hit by its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948 and is on the brink of its first debt default. The economic crisis is a very like bad condition in Sri Lanka. So not only like uh, all the nations like Sinhalese, Muslim, Tamils, we all are fighting to uh, like send this government, Gota by Rajapaksha. So, uh, we all are like fighting. The people are staying from like day and nights to protest and win against uh, to get a proper decision. Hundreds of supporters of opposition National People's Power Party on Sunday also began a three-day 57-kilometer march from the southern city of Beruvala to Colombo. 
protesting against the government's handling of a devastating economic crisis. Economic mismanagement by successive governments weakened Sri Lanka's public finances, but the situation was exacerbated by deep tax cuts enacted by the Rajapaksha administration soon after it took office in 2019. Rajapaksha's government will begin talks with International Monetary Fund, IMF from Monday for a loan program and analysts have flagged political instability as a risk in Sri Lanka, finding a way out of financial turmoil. The Taliban's return to power in August last year unleashed a wave of concern among Afghan women who feared that the rights won in the last two decades would disappear. Business is gradually reviving and the administration has assured openness to companies and individuals that invested in the country. Habiba Amini runs a tailoring shop in Rabia Balki Bazaar the only market in Afghanistan's mazar -e sharif city where women run their own businesses, mostly shops and eateries. Amini's workshop was opened by Malvi Kadratullah Tariq, mayor of mazar -e sharif a couple of weeks ago. Since the Taliban gained power last August, questions have been asked about the status of working women. Business is gradually reviving and the administration has assured openness to companies and individuals that invested in the country. According to eight agencies' reports, more than 22 million people face outright hunger in today's Afghanistan and finding a job is next to impossible. For many women and girls, employment means food. Amini is more than thankful to the mayor for supporting her and other women who want or need to work. However, the Taliban's return to power in August 2021 unleashed a wave of concern among Afghan women. Several restrictions have been imposed in the past eight months. The most recent one being barring adolescent girls from receiving an education. The Taliban cited a technical issue and a lack of standardized uniforms for students around the country for the move. The last time the Taliban ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001, they banned female education and most employment. A temple of Hindu monkey god Lord Hanuman in central India has a unique feature and is known for its dominance of the name of Hindu god Prince Ram. The devotee have to write the name of Lord Rama 108 times on paper to seek the divine blessings. A unique temple in India's central Indore city is known for its dominance of the name of Hindu god Prince Rama everywhere. From the temple walls, ceilings, peak tops and even the entry ticket is for devotees to write the name 108 times on a slip. The temple, primarily belonging to Hindu monkey god Hanuman, has a special attachment to the name of Rama, of whom Hanuman is believed to be the primary companion in the war against demon king Ravan. The temple has a pillar about 200 feet tall with the name of Rama inscribed everywhere, inside out and a 50 feet Hanuman statue. The interior of the temple has statues of several other Hindu gods. The entry to the place is conditional to writing the name of Rama 108 times. The visually impaired, differently abled and illiterate people are exempted from the condition. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.